There are so many myths about heat pumps that just aren't true, and the number one myth is that they don't work well in cold climates like Colorado. So if you're in the market for a heat pump, you're definitely going to want to watch this video because I see people getting a lot of bad advice in this area, particularly as it relates to when it does and doesn't make sense to buy a heat pump. And at the end of this video, there'll be links to a few other videos on the topic that are very informative and can help you make a better decision on whether a heat pump is a good decision for your home. And the truth is, it may or may not be. So you wanna have all the facts first before making that decision. So first off, if you're not familiar with what a heat pump is, it's actually not a new concept. Heat pumps have been around for decades and all that they are is an air conditioner with a reversing valve. And I'm not going to go into that in this video, but there will be a link to a video on our channel that explains heat pumps in three minutes. And it's super easy to understand. It's a quick video and you can watch that after this video for more information. But recently there's been a lot of talk about heat pumps because of decarbonization and electrification. And right now there's even a few tax credits available, which I'll talk about later in this video. And these tax credits are a result of the Inflation Reduction Act that was recently passed. And if you're wondering what heat pumps have to do with inflation, don't worry, you're not alone, me too. So in this video, we're going to cover three aspects of heat pumps and whether or not they make sense for you. Now, first off, we're going to talk about what climates heat pumps work well in. In addition to this, we'll talk about which heat pumps work best in your specific climate. Number two, we'll talk about the economics. And this is a question that most people have is what does it cost? And we will cover the install cost as well as operational cost because in order to get the full picture, you really need to look at the whole situation. And we will also talk about heat pumps and how they work when you have a solar setup because this is honestly one of the best times to get a heat pump is if you have solar. But again, you wanna make sure you're getting the right kind of heat pump that's going to work well for your application and that meets your needs. And I'll also touch briefly on the Inflation Reduction Act, like I mentioned, and I'll talk about some of the tax credits available. And third, what I'll cover is a few of our favorite heat pumps. I will go over some of the different brands and models that we recommend, and I'll explain why we recommend them. And I'll also tell you about some of the brands or types of systems we avoid and recommend against. So what climates do heat pumps do well in? Well, the truth is that all high-end heat pumps now can handle very cold climates, and very hot climates, and this is especially true for dual fuel systems. I live in the mountains in Colorado and our heat pump kept up at negative eight degrees in an older mountain home that is not well insulated. We have a VRV Life heat pump and these do very well down to about negative 10 degrees. And below that, the backup electric heat kit or backup furnace kicks in without missing a beat in the event that the heat pump can't keep up. Not all brands are created equal, and I remember calling a vendor one time and asking about their heat pump products and capacities and low ambient temperature ratings, and the rep had the nerve to say, listen, heat pumps don't work well in Colorado. And my first thought was, well, maybe your heat pumps don't do well in Colorado, because mine does just fine. Now that brings me to my next point on this note, and that's what type of heat pumps work well in your particular climate. Now, my two favorite brands are Daikin and Mitsubishi, and I'm partial to these brands because we are dealers for both of them, but we're dealers for both of them for a reason. And that's because they are a top-notch product, number one, with solid warranties and a solid reputation. The reason these are solid brands is that number one, their efficiency ratings, also known as SEER ratings, are very high on their inverter equipment. This isn't to say that other brands don't also have high efficiency equipment, most do, but the inverters produced by Daikin and Mitsubishi have been designed and tested in fridge and weather, and they work great. For example, there's a Mitsubishi IntelliHeat installed at a guard shack in Aspen, Colorado that is the only source of heat, and that thing cranks out some heat even in the middle of winter, and we have installed Daikin VRV life systems in homes where the backup furnace didn't kick on for years because the heat pump kept up year round. And if you're in a moderate climate or warmer climate, you might be thinking, well, I don't know if I really need a super efficient heat pump, but that's actually not true because remember your heat pump is also your air conditioner and it just happens to be able to heat too. So if you're in a warmer climate like Phoenix, Arizona or Houston, Texas, for example, you'll still be able to benefit from a high efficiency heat pump because in Phoenix, you're running your AC 24 seven in the late spring, summer and fall. So having a higher efficiency system makes sense even though you're not using your heat pump primarily for heating in these regions. 
Washington. And on that note, if you happen to be in one of the markets we service in Colorado, Arizona, or Texas, and want to talk to us directly, there's a link right here where you can request more information and get in touch with one of our technicians to answer any questions by phone, or there'll be a link to our calendar where you can actually schedule with us directly for us to come out and provide an estimate in your home and answer any questions you might have about what type of HVAC would be best for your specific situation. Now let's talk about some of the financial aspects and tax credits and rebates available. As of 2023, the IRS has a $2,000 rebate towards the purchase of a heat pump and the Inflation Reduction Act has increased that up to an $8,000 rebate for some families based on their AGI or adjusted gross income. But tax credits aside, there are a few considerations in considering a furnace and air conditioner versus heat pump debate, and I'll touch on those now. Number one is the cost of electricity compared to the cost of natural gas in your area. Now this is market specific, so you'll have to look at your natural gas bill. Natural gas prices have skyrocketed recently, and this oftentimes has made heat pumps a more attractive option. Number two is being on solar. Now if you are on solar and able to offset 100% of your power consumption, you can oftentimes heat and cool your home without any additional demand on the grid. This is great in places like Phoenix with year-round sun. And number three, does your current system need replacement? If you have been planning on replacing your equipment for a while now and you are in the market for a new AC, it might be worth it to upgrade to a high efficiency heat pump depending on your circumstances. However, if you have a brand new system but decided you want a heat pump, it probably doesn't make economic sense because you already have new equipment. Now, this is common in new home builds, for example. However, something to consider is that if your new system is in a new build and the builders put in the cheapest possible equipment, if you're able to save money on your utilities and plan on being in the house for a while, the savings might be worth it. This is really case by case but a technician or contractor like myself could take a look at your consumption and run the numbers. And lastly, before we wrap up, I'll touch on a few brands we like and recommend. Like I mentioned already, we sell Daikin and that's our preferred brand. They specialize in inverter technology and have a 12 year part warranty, which is an industry best. And that's what initially attracted me to them. And in addition to Daikin, we recently started carrying Mitsubishi because of their IntelliHeat option, because it has a unique feature and that it's a communicating inverter heat pump system, which in layman terms means it's very, very quiet and efficient. But like I said, it's a communicating system. However, it doesn't require you to change out the furnace or air handler at the same time. And it's a very unique product in that respect. And Mitsubishi also has a reliable and stellar reputation. And surprise, surprise, they're both from Japan, which generally speaking makes awesome products. And the whole country has a reputation for companies that provide quality, reliable manufacturing. As far as domestic brands, we'll be reviewing a few others, but Fujitsu also has some high-end inverter technologies. We don't sell them and I'm not as familiar with their products, but they're also a good company with a great reputation. So if you'd like more information or to speak with one of our technicians directly, reach out below. There's a link to request more information or book a free estimate with one of our technicians. And also feel free to check out some of the other videos on our channel at the HVAC Dope Show where we talk about heat pumps, furnaces, boilers, ACs, and everything HVAC. And we put out weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home.